really, really excited to be here. So let's get stuck into it. Control your words and emotions during difficult conversations. A little bit about my background first. Okay, so I was raised uh, by a very, very poor family and my father was a cane cutter and he used to cut sugar cane. He used to cut it by hand back in the days, a long time ago. He used to cut it by hand. And, of course, he was a very hardworking man. And we had very, very traditional values. And the traditional values that we had uh, when I was growing up was really about women's role was to look after the men. You know, it was our role and my duty. And I had three brothers and I was the only daughter. And I resented the fact at a young age that I had to actually do all the housework and do everything and the boys didn't do anything in the house because their role, traditional role, was between the four of them, they had to mow the grass outside. And I thought that was very unfair because I had to do all this extra work. But the thing is um, they also were very unemotional, they had no emotional intelligence. So it wasn't really the most perfect family to come up with. But what I used to do was I used to escape my reality. And the way I used to escape my reality was I, I was a dreamer and I was everyone used to call me a dreamer. And I would dream about becoming this picture of this beautiful white stallion. And not only would I see the stallion, I would become the stallion. So that's how I used to escape. And in my dreams, I would be this magnificent white animal, animal that had a fiery spirit and that would run free. And my dreams always ended with me as the horse standing on top of a big mountain and protecting my herd. So I was always the protector of a community. And then my, my, my and, and everyone used to say to me, stop dreaming. But I had this dream all the time. And I mean all the time. And my parents are very poor, but occasionally they would allow me to, to, to rent a horse. So we used to um, um, be, be close to a riding school. I was that 10-year-old child that every time a horse came past my door, I'd run outside and look at the horse. And uh, this particular day I was riding this, this horse that I rented out and this man jumped out and grabbed my bridle and he gave me a note to take home to my parents. And I went home to my parents and, of course, the next day I was taken to see this man and I thought maybe I was getting into trouble because sometimes uh, as a child I was a little bit naughty and if you if you sort of um, galloped your horses across the footpath that's nice, the green grass, often their hooves would chop the grass up and I thought I was in trouble from doing that. Anyway, this man came to me and he said to me, do you love horses? And I loved horses. He said to me, come with me. And he took me around behind the, the back of the yard. And in there, there was a stable. And guess what, guess what, guess what was inside the stable? You can put it in the chat if you could guess. Guess what was inside the stable? Inside the stable, there was a white stallion, exactly in my dream, exactly what I was dreaming about. And not only was it a white stallion, he asked me as a 10-year-old child to ride this stallion in, a, in, in events called Stallion on the Saddle where I would compete with other stallions as well. And you know what it's like when you get lots of stallions together. There's a dominance play. And as a young child, I was courageous to do that because I was the only little girl who was riding in the events. I was competing against all adults but I had to control the horse and everything else as well. But what I learned from that experience at a very young age, one was I could manifest my dreams. If I believed in something deep core into my body, I could manifest it. So I learned at a very, very young age that a dreamer can become a visionary. The other thing that I learned because I, I was growing up in a, a, in a family that was very unemotional, I felt like I didn't really fit in. Uh, when I was very young, I used to stutter. Uh, I was the quiet girl who sat in the corner that was to be invisible. No one used to actually, I didn't quite fit in. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of friends and I thought I was invisible. But this man saw me. This man saw me and not only did he see me, he saw my potential in me. 
And as a young girl, he believed in my ability to actually ride this white horse. So the lessons that I learned was sometimes, even though we try to play small, sometimes people will see your brilliance. And when they see your brilliance, then you start to believe in yourself as well. And us as leaders, this is what we need to do as well. We need to see the brilliance in people around us. We need to be able to see that and believe in their ability to change. But at the same time, we need to lead by example as well. So why is it so important to be able to have those difficult conversations? You know, why is it so important for us to actually be able to control our emotions and communicate in those important conversations. And do you sometimes feel like this picture where you just want to hide and go, please make it go away? And uh, if you're like that, you know, you probably, I've been there before and I'm sure we've all been there before, but the reason why it's so important to understand how to have those difficult conversations is because when we are working with human beings, when we're working with other people, there is always different personality types. We all have different values. We all have different perspectives and we all have hidden agendas, things that we want to achieve as well. So there will always be conflict. There will always be conflict when there's a group of people together. But it's really about how we deal with conflict. You know, if we, if we embrace and understand and not be afraid of conflict, then we can understand how we can manage it and embrace it as well because obviously there's healthy conflict and there's also a conflict that's not healthy. And the healthy conflict is being able to listen to each other and with respect put forward different opinions and ideas so that we can uh, actually go through that information and gain our own insights as well. So if you're working with people, there's going to be conflict, but let's look at it today as how we're going to handle those conversations and how we're going to handle it and speak as women and men who are empowered in the workplace. So this Gallup poll research came out uh, in 2019 and the research shows that 72% of organisations will tolerate bad behaviour. And, and you may think, well, why does that happen? Because I want you to understand that a lot of people who have a high position within organisations, um, they have a natural... Um, a way of working and what they and what a lot of those people do is they're task orientated. So people who are task orientated, it's good to have them in the organization because they get stuff done. And we need to have people task orientated as well. Otherwise, you know, the organization's not going to meet their goals. And uh, and any organization or any business has to you know uh, maintain with their profits to keep everyone employed as well. But the problem is sometimes is someone who's task orientated, if they become under stress, then they'll naturally go back to task orientation as well. And of course, the task orientated person wants everything done yesterday. Now, immediately, they're not really interested when they're under stress about building relationships. Even though they've learnt the importance of building relationship, it's a learned behaviour, not a natural behaviour. So therefore, if they go back into that natural behaviour, it's not about us. It's about them and us understanding that really their intention behind what they're doing is they want to get things done. They want results done. However, what they're doing in a way is not supporting the relationship that they actually need to focus on between other team members and colleagues as well. Now, in today's webinar, I'm going to go through the exact, um, the exact 
uh, ways that um, and methods and framework that I actually teach my private clients. And this information that I'm going to part with you today is going to completely change the way that you think around having those difficult conversations and also the way that you can actually use your emotions as a person who can empower the conversation and not use your emotions to hold yourself back from having the conversation. And I also will show you a way that you can learn more as well. Renata came to me. Renata came to me. She was a newly appointed leader. She'd only been in leadership for about seven months or eight months and she was a quietly spoken leader. And what was happening, she had a very dominating team around her. And they're very, very much strong personality types. And they just didn't want to listen to what she had to say. And quite often they would disrespect her that if she had a different opinion and she tried to put forward her ideas during the meeting, that they would actually storm out of the meeting and not even stay there. So she was really struggling with her role. And we've been four weeks doing these techniques that I'm going to teach you today on this webinar. She had those difficult conversations. She had gained that she had gained the confidence to have those conversations. And today she has them quite regularly. She doesn't enjoy them, but she's able to actually use these techniques I showed her to, to actually anchor herself in and to have those conversations with her team. And now she's actually enjoying her role now. Now, I'm 100% committed to you today, tonight. I'm 100% to give you my all, absolutely all, in the short amount of time that we have together. So I'm going to really inspire, motivate, and give everything that I have for you today. But what I want in return from you, what I need in return from you is to uh, listen to what I say. Listen to what I say, and if there's any resistance around what I say, I want you to change the way you think to, to think to yourself, how can I use this in my role? Because when you do this, you create a mindset of growth, which leads to change and personal development. And now that we're committed together, now that we're together, now we're going to actually come together now and we're going to have an amazing seminar tonight. So I'm after engagement. So if you're in, I want to see a in into the chat box so I can see that you're still with me and I'm still looking for this chat box to come up again so I can read it. Are you in? Type in in if you're in. Okay, I've got some, Faye, got you in. I've got some more people coming in. I love it, I love it. I love when people are interacting as well. It, it inspires me more to give more. So the more you interact with me, the more I'm going to give you. Is that a good deal? Yes? All right. So let's look at some of the three secrets that I'm going to tell you, talk to you about. So these are going to immediately transform your confidence so you can be, be finally heard, I mean really listened to, but at the same time control your emotions during those conversations as well. So our first secret that we're going into, and this is one I believe is the core and the foundation. This is all about your mindset, you know, your mindset, your approach, you know, your meaning to actually having difficult conversations. And sometimes in the past, our past history, we could have experienced some bad experiences around having difficult conversations. And that's actually conditioned in our mind. So, uh, so what happens is it's sitting there and when we see a similar event occurring, we automatically go back to our past and look at the way that maybe we weren't as resourceful as we wanted to. So we start to have all of these emotions that build up before someone even speaks to us as well. But your mindset is so important. And I also, I love this quote here as well. It's about, don't worry about failure, worry about the chances you miss 
when you don't even try. So let's talk about mindset first as our first secret. I think most of you, especially in the leadership role, uh, would have known about the iceberg theory, that we know that most of the work, uh, most of the, uh, um, the mindset and the unconscious uh, role is sitting un underneath so we can't see it. So it's under the water. It's what's really what's happening there. It's sitting there and um, so I'll just see what's happening there. It's sitting there and that's the root of the issue. That's down the bottom is the root of the issue. And above the water in this diagram is the behaviour that we can see, the behaviour that we can see um, openly by the actions that people are taking. But if we really want to be empowered and we want to create long-term change, we have to look at our inner game. So our inner game is how do we identify ourselves when it comes to having uh, difficult conversations or when it comes to leadership or public speaking or, or whatever, how do we identify ourselves? Are we, we are identifying ourselves with someone who has got confidence or we are um, identifying ourselves as someone who hasn't got confidence. And, of course, then that plays into our belief system, you know. Uh, we've got our beliefs and we value, we've got our values as well. But if we want to actually be able to handle difficult conversations more effectively and handle our emotions at the same time, we must address the root issue of why we can't do that. And the root issue is our mindset. It's our identity, our beliefs and our fears. So if we believe, for example, I was brought up that um, I thought my father was an authority figure. So therefore, I was brought up never to, never, never to what challenge the authority figure, to be very um, obedient, to be very subservient and to listen to the authority figure. And um, if, if we have that same belief in an organisation, then we may feel it's not our place to challenge our managers if their behaviour isn't very good either because we put them as the authority figure. And this is why a lot of authority figures, they wear uniforms. Like, for example, they wear it for authority. Like if you're a doctor, you'll wear the, what's it, the stethoscope around your neck or your white coat. If you're a policeman, you'll wear your policeman's outfit. You know, if you're a fireman, you have a uniform as well. So this positions people for authority figure. Now, traditional values, um, if they never challenge the authority figure, but we know that's changing today because a lot of today, the um, I suppose, um, the young people coming through, they are and they're rebelling against the authority figure as well. But to create real change, we have to actually sit down, do self-reflection, look at our identity, look at our beliefs and look at our values. Now, short-term change. Short-term change is send someone off to a training program. Send them off to actually gather information of, of the scripts or how to communicate or, you know, active listening, you know, all the different skills in our skill kit that we've got we send them off there to actually acquire those skills as well. And, of course, having those capabilities will help them to perform at a higher level, you know, take the action on results. But the thing is, if, you, if we send some off and give them the toolbox and they don't believe or they haven't got the confidence or the ability, the, the, the feeling of having the ability to implement those strategies, and do those strategies, when they're under stress, then um, they, they won't do it. They won't use that information. They'll, they'll revert back to avoiding and not wanting to have that conversation. So what, why, does that, you know, why does that really happen? And the reason why it happens is our emotions are determined, thoughts come first. Our thoughts always come first. And this is why if someone is, um, has a, a trauma in their life, like a grief or a death or whatever, often when people speak to them, the first thing that person responds is, I feel numb. 
I feel completely numbed out. I can't think straight. I have fog head or whatever. So what we're doing is we're trying to protect, our unconscious mind is trying to protect us from feeling too much stress or overwhelm and we numb out for a specific time. Because when we numb out, then we have no emotions. We don't have excitement. We don't have passion. We don't have uh, sadness. Uh, we have no emotions at all. We walk around numbed out. Um, and, of course, this is why, but our thoughts are, are, are placed in us from our past conditioning. So if you've had, uh, say, for example, we've got Jim in the background or Mary in the background and they're very aggressive uh, people to us, uh, interrupt us, they talk to us or they belittle us in front of other people so we feel humiliated or whatever, we have stored that memory, cellular memory into our body. So what we do there is we think that when we, when we see that person again, they're going to do the same thing. And, and the last time it happened, it wasn't a good ending um, that the same thing will happen again. So therefore, we try to go into the, the fight or flight syndrome. Uh, the fight or flight syndrome in conflict resolution, of course, is we'll either get really aggressive and uh, try to uh, get back with them that way, or we will do the avoiding and withdraw and try to hide and just really just um, uh, tolerate the bad behaviour that they're doing in front of us. So therefore, if we want to be able to control our emotions, therefore we have to reprogram the way that we feel about having difficult conversations. We have to uh, reprogram the way that we are going to create a different meaning to having um, difficult conversations. And we need to almost overcome our own fears uh, that things won't go right for us. So therefore, if we want to change our results, it's no point just changing the behaviours and the actions of giving us course information. We've got to go all the way back and reprogram and change our thoughts so that we can look at things differently. And one way that we can do this is the more you understand yourself, the more, we call it emotional intelligence, the more you understand yourself, the more you understand why you do things. You know, you know why do you not, not, not step up and have those conversations? You know, why do you get aggressive when you have those conversations? And it, it always happened because your values have been violated or your beliefs are not supporting the actions that you want to achieve. And that comes from your thoughts. So one way that you can start exploring that is uh, at the end of the day, do some daily journaling. So when you've had that difficult conversation uh, and it hasn't gone really well, it's important to take time to reflect on the situation and look at what happened, what had occurred, what part of the conversation did you lose control, what part of the conversation did you lose the power so that you can learn from those lessons and triggers and become more resourceful and more prepared next time when you speak to that person. Because you know what? We, we, are, we have these unconscious habits that we behave the same way all the time. So once you start noticing that with a person, you start to understand their patterns. and You kind of know how they're going to respond to the situation when you're taking a stance. So that's your first assignment for you to do. Because quite often what we do is before um, we start work, we'll do our to-do list, we'll get ourselves prepared and everything else as well. But do we do a closure of the day list? You know, do we reflect back on the day and go, what's our distractions? We you know what happened to us today. Um, you know, what happened with this conversation and how can I get better? So you need to learn from your past experiences so that you can are more resourceful when you move forward. Comment in the box your thoughts about the first secret, which is understanding your mindset. Comment in the box now 
and we'll move on to our next secret. What are your thoughts now? Yes, very good, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Sharon, hi. All right, so let's go to our next secret that we're moving into now. Oh, before, before we move that, just a bit of stats here for you. Um, training alone gives about 25% increase in productivity and resourcefulness of a person. Coaching, 85% increase. And the reason we know why is coaching uh, focuses more on the inner game the inner game about identity, beliefs and values, whereas training, which is important, it coaches on the capabilities um, and the performance and the actions as well. So let's go to the second secret. Well, anyone want to guess what the second secret is? Anyone brave to have a guess? Put it in the chat. No? That's okay. So our second secret that we're going into is the next thing is we need to really understand what we focus on. Um, so this is a second secret at all. So here's this nice quote here. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an art but a habit. So what do you focus on when you're having those difficult conversations? So it's really understanding, do we focus on things that we've got control over or do we focus on things that we haven't got control over? So here's an example of some things that we've got control over. If there's anyone heard of Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Women, uh, highly, effective, highly Effective Habits, has anyone heard of that book? Just put in the chat if you've heard of that book. Yeah? Yeah, you might, you might understand this, uh, this habit then. So it's really important that we understand what we've got control over and what we have it and what we should focus on. Now, in Stephen Covey's book of Seven Habits of Highly Affected peop um, People, there's um, one box which is we have no control over certain items and next, another box is we have indirect control and, of course, our third box is we have no control. Now, we know that I cannot and you cannot control people. You can't control their mind. Simple as that. You know, um, you, can, you can put forward your ideas and opinions and everything else, but you've got no control on that person actually having a willingness to take those ideas on. It's up to them to take that responsibility and ownership to do that. Uh, we also, in an organisation, because we're working for a company, there are certain policies and procedures that we've got no control over. You know, it's not our authority to have control on writing some policies and procedures out. It's determined by, you know, the board of the company or the general manager or the directors or whatever of the company. So sometimes we have no control. We have got control of putting forward our ideas but we haven't got control of actually the final decision. Uh, we also cannot control any unexpected events that come on board. And let's look at example COVID-19. We had no control over COVID-19. You know, it's affected everyone in, in many different ways, but we had absolutely no control over it. So we've had to pivot. We've had to change. We've had to move around it so that we can still perform effectively in our role and also the organisation as well. We can't control outcomes. So what I'm talking about here is I can control a process, but I can't control an outcome. So if I'm presenting an idea forward during a difficult conversation, I have 100% control of how I prepare. I have 100% control of my approach to the conversation. I have 100% control of being able to ask good questions, of being uh, calm, of being centred. I can do all of that work and put forward my ideas, but at the end of the day, I still cannot control people. At the end of the day, I still can't control people. And we just got to accept that. But hopefully we can communicate in a way, logically in a way as well, that we're going to influence people to take on our ideas. And a way that we can do that is always, always building a relationship. If you've got a strong relationship with people, they're more likely 
to want to follow you. And that relationship doesn't mean they have to like you. That, that relationship is they have that respect. You know, you're demonstrating that respect all the time. Yeah, you're fair, you're approachable, um, you listen, uh, you give good advice, you give good feedback, you're decisive. You know, all those great characteristics that um, leaders have and they demonstrate as well. And I'm talking about effective leaders. And we also cannot control what they think about you. So I remember an old saying that a friend of mine used to always say to me, Lee, it's none of your business what they're thinking about you. You just need to focus on being the best version of yourself. Um, but what do we have control over? We have control over our thoughts, our actions. No one can make you feel anything. We, we, we feel the, the, the emotions because we're still... Um, attached to our past conditioning but nobody can make you feel anything that's what you do okay we uh, have 100 percent control how we respond to the situation do we respond to situation as a leader or do we respond to the to the situation as someone lacking confidence and not willing to make a stance for your principles um, how we choose to interact with people that's, you know, as our approach. Remember, communication is not always what you say, it's how you say it. Um, we have 100% in the way we upper hold our own values and our beliefs. And also, we've got our own responsibility to keep on a growth mindset, to keep on learning, to keep on developing ourselves as well. So when we're developing ourselves, it's always we're doing both. We're doing inner game which is our identity and our beliefs and our values and everything else as well. But we also need to develop our outer game as well, which is our capabilities and our skill levels as well. Both of them are very important. And we have 100% control of our choices and, uh, of course, the processes that we do as well. So you can see we have a lot of control over things. But if we're focusing on what we haven't got control over, then what will happen is your confidence will spiral down, down because uh, you'll feel stuck, you'll feel trapped because you haven't got control over that. So it's so important to focus on the things that you have got control over. Kylie came to me. Uh, Kylie came to me. Uh, she had a bully, uh, a, a different, another manager. She was a manager and uh, she had another manager who was very much more bully. She um, was very stressed. Um, you know, her confidence was spiraling down. And uh, she did some work with me and it got to the stage where she would actually use her mindset in a way that she would actually visualise that person as her favourite toy uh, as a steam train running around in circles. So therefore, when she was confronted by the bully, she wasn't reactive, she remained calm, calm. And inside of her mind, she was quietly laughing at the childish behavior this person was demonstrating in front of her. So it allowed her to remain calm, poised, relaxed and centered so that um, she could still put forward her point of view as well. But not only did she feel more confident, but all her colleagues started to see her management style changed. Everything started to change and people started to notice that she became a stronger person within herself and she could stand up for herself as well, which is obviously a sign of a good leader. So I have a question to ask you at the moment. So we put in, uh, you can answer one of these questions for me in the chat. So this is just a couple of questions for you. So in the chat, if you want to uh, type in the question that you want to answer, um, uh, you want to answer, and then and then after that, put the answer for me here as well. So one question is is uh, from where you are now, and what would be your first step that you could take to feel good about having difficult conversations? So if that's a question you want to think about and put in the chat. Put that question there and just think of one thing that you can do right now to start feeling better around having difficult conversations 
that I've already talked about tonight so far. Or the other question you may choose is, you know, what are you not ready to do just yet? Um, then um, what could you do in the meantime? So if you're not ready to have that conversation yet, you know, what could you do in the meantime? And the third one is uh, the choice is imagine that you've just had an ideal week and what three things did you complete in that week? So I'm going to give you a second now to have a ponder over those questions and then put them in the chat. Just choose one and put it in the chat and put your response beside it. Anyone? Seeing the outcomes, so thanks, Faye. Seeing the outcomes from the conversations and achieving them through a level of good communication. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Faye. Anyone else would like to participate right now? Uh, I am not ready yet, but I could visualize a childlike train. Yes. Yes. Whatever toy, it's, it's about you choosing a toy or something. So, and you're thinking in your head, you know, in our mind, you're thinking, oh, my God, this person really is a child kind of thing, you know what I mean, the way they're conducting themselves. So you're, you're taking the emotion away from yourself. You're not internal, you're external, which is what we want. Anyone else? Anyone else want to participate right now? Ideal week, uh, complete, complete idea, idea. I need my glasses to read that. Hang on. Let me have a look here. <laughs> Complete. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, didn't finish that. I'm going, I need my glasses on right now. Let's see what's going on there as well. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> You're just you're just seeing if I'm if I was paying attention. I completely get that. <laughs> Let's go on to our third secret. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to laugh sometimes, hey? Uh, our third secret, let's have a look at that. So our third secret is having the ability to reframe. So having the ability to reframe, uh, in order to succeed, you must first believe that you can. So um, reframing is, uh, you, you probably see it, it happens all the time and we do it unconsciously at times. So reframing, I've just lost my screen. Let me pull it back up. That's it. Whoops, what's happened here? Technical problem. Can anyone still see my reframing? Beautiful. <laughs> so reframing, it's all around being able to put a different meaning around the situation and the conversation. So uh, lots, of, lots of bad stuff have happened to all of us in our past. That's life, you know. Lots and lots of things have happened to us. And sometimes what we've got to do is got to put a different meaning around that event. So say, for example, we look at, um, look at let's look at COVID-19 because it's an easy example to show you. Um, COVID-19, you know, a lot of grief, a lot of death, a lot of people uncertainty, people lost work, businesses, you know, really suffered and they still are. Um, you know, lockdown, uh, fear, everything else as well. But when we look back on this situation, maybe in a year or two years, we can see in a different way. And what, what was good about COVID-19 and what came out was people realised the importance of connection. You know, people realised the importance of family. People really realised the importance of, um, you know, having family they realised the importance of connecting. They realised um, that there's more to life than just, you know, just work or whatever. They started to realise all of that. So when we look at that and even, even when we go back to normality maybe in the future, maybe we'll still remember the importance of connection the importance of having more meaning to life and not just be working every day and um, having no meaning in our life as well. So that's a way that we can reframe the event as well as look at, so it's not positive thinking, it's looking at what's come out of this, you know, you know what's the, the gem, what's the goodness out of this as well. 
But a way that we can do reframing uh, with difficult conversations is I like to change the meaning of difficult conversations to real conversations. So real conversations to me means that R stands for it's an opportunity for me to build a relationship or maybe an opportunity for me to get to know someone more. It's also an opportunity for me to engage, engage with that person as well. But it's a great opportunity for me to be authentic and to stand by my principles. Great, so I'm heard. So I feel like I've got a voice. And it's also a great opportunity for me to listen, to listen and ask powerful questions so I start to unravel the complications of human beings as what we all are, and I start to understand that person at a deeper level and I start to see what is really going on. So sometimes they're saying is, hear what I'm not saying. So if I change the frame to make it this way, I'm feeling more empowered and I can control my emotions more because it's an opportunity for me to grow. It's an opportunity to um, you know, grow within my role. It's an opportunity for me to take stands. It's an opportunity for me to um, develop my skills and put forward my uh, opinions and ideas as well. Because the only way we can build character is we have to overcome challenges. So, um, you know, it's, that's called experience in life is because we've overcome challenges and we um, understand that the things that happen to us, which are really soul destroying, we would never do to someone else. So it helps us to understand the kindness and the sort of person that we want to become as well. And I'm hopefully everyone's on the same page me with, with this. It's about not getting back, not being even, but it's about making a stance so that you demonstrate the, lead, uh, the leadership qualities and the empowerment qualities of men and women within your field that is extraordinary. Letitia was the same. It's the same all the time. Again, you know, what you're experiencing, a lot of people experience. Uh, Letitia, she was, um, she got promoted within the organisation. Um, she had to move from being best friends with her, with her colleagues and peers to become their leader. And that was a hard transition because her friends didn't want to be told what to do. And of course, and they knew what buttons to push with her as well because they were her friends. So she had developed the confidence to know that she was worthy enough and selected to be a leader of the company. And um, her, her bosses acknowledged that she became a stronger person. And now she's a partner within this company as well. So our third assignment, our third assignment is just for you to really think about, think about a situation that maybe impacted you negatively in the past. And if you were speaking to someone who was close to you and you're giving them advice that would help them to uplift them, to help them to feel better about themselves, what would you say? What would you say to that person? It's almost like if your child or a close friend came to you and they were crying and upset because maybe they had a bad experience at school, what would you say to them to uplift them, to help them, to protect them? And this advice that you would give to them, you would also give to yourself as well because sometimes we just got to be kind to ourselves as well. So comment in the chat. If anything, if this makes sense to you so far. So tell them in the chat a couple of things that you've actually learned so far that we've been talking about. No comments? I know there's a delay sometimes. So sometimes it's called patience training as well. Yeah. We're all in together and how can I help you? Yes. Yes. Love that. Love that. I need to, to leave. Oh, that's a different one. Love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Uh, and that's and that's really good to understand that we're all normal. You know, there's nothing wrong with us. You know, we're all normal. So as you can see so far with our three secrets, because remembering um, to control your emotions, you must come from your thought level first. If, you, if you're thinking yourself empowered and you're thinking, okay, you may feel nervous about the conversation, but you're uh, emotionally engaged with your values and your principles uh, and also in the way you want to lead, uh, then you will have that conversation based upon those values or those principles or those beliefs. Um, so first of all, your first secret is you strengthen your mindset. That's the most important thing. And not only will it help you within your career and help you um, with your difficult conversations, you can also use all of those skills on your partner as well. <laughs> so you can get your message across with them as well. Because remembering, you know, people is, you know, people is, uh, people are people. You know, whoever, whatever, whether it is your social activities or your partner or your work, people are all the same. They don't change between being home and being at work. The second thing is always, always focus on what you've got control over. If you focus on what you don't haven't got control over, then you're going to feel that you're completely stuck. And I mean stuck. And there's nothing worse than feeling like you're not moving forward, that you're actually sitting in limbo. And the third one is I want you to think about reframing and taking the lessons from what's happened in the past, use those lessons to make yourself more resourceful so you can actually approach the situation differently next time when you have to. And I've also given you three assignments as well. I'm a coach. I can't help it. Okay. So your first assignment is to do a little bit of journaling. You know, at the end of the day, it could be only five minutes, you know, before you go to bed. You know, put your journal on your pillow or something and do a few minutes of journaling before you go to bed, you know, looking at your self, uh, self-awareness. self because the more self-awareness you have, the easier it is to you to manage those things. And, of course, the more management you have as well, you know, the more confidence you're going to build and, and the results are going to be based upon that as well. Uh, we've also given you some questions to focus on is uh, that first step of thinking about, you know, where from now is your first step that will help you feel better around having difficult conversations and also to reframe reframe the situation so you put a different meaning around it. So a way that we can do that is moving difficult conversations to real conversations and feeling really connected and empowered during those conversations. So my, I'm asking you to commit, commit to take action. So with one of those assignments that I've just given you, I want you to commit that you'll take action within the next 48 hours, you'll actually implement it. Because I don't know you, but I work with a lot of people and so many people, they'll go and they'll learn more information. They'll, they're called information gatherers, but they don't do anything with it. So information is powerful, very, very important. But if you don't implement it, you're just walking around encyclopedia. You're not actually doing or taking risk to actually step out of your comfort zone to be courageous to achieve what you need to achieve in your life, in all areas of your life. Would you like to have more of? You know, some gain some great insights and perspectives by talking to other community members so that you can get over any sticking points within your in your business at the moment. You know, when, when we put our heads together as a, a group you know, through through collaboration, we can start bouncing ideas of each other. So to gain more insights and perspectives, it's going to help you to get out of those sticking points as well. But also the community uh, is going to allow you as well to express your express yourself freely so if you're having those tough days you can turn up and you've got people who will respect you and listen to you and help you to keep moving forward as well but also to learn much more through having our live mastermind
mastermind groups. So during those live mastermind groups, you will you know, be involved with powerful discussions. And, and we know through stories and discussions that we gain our own insights as well. But also to feel really supported and connected, you know, have a sense of belonging and that community spirit when you're with women who are just the same as you. So being a community that cares and also believes in you, perhaps more than you believe in yourself. And on those tough days, you know, be able to express yourself freely and stop pretending and let those masks down as well so that you're able to, you know, be authentic and not hold things back all the time um, with yourself as well. And, of course, then with all this happening, you know, you're going to be able to sleep better at night because you're going to be able to express yourself freely so you can reduce that anxiety and worry as well, uh, which will lead through to improved health and mental energy as well. But to feel more fulfilled and equipped for new possibilities as the doors open for you in future situations as well. And also detach yourself from the office drama. Leave the office drama at home so that you can laugh and have more fun with your family and also be emotionally available for your family as well. So I'm proudly I'm proud to present to you my Lead with Confidence uh, Club. And that's for empowering women who are in the workplace and who are leaders. Now, the, uh, let me take a moment just to tell you a little bit about our purpose. So the Lead with Confidence Club is a heart-centered community of like-minded women who show up, speak up and uplift others to inspire them into action. The high touch, live masterminding sessions uh, and the book club discussions uh, led personally by myself, gives you the powerful insights and new perspectives so that you can quickly focus on what is possible, making more progress as an empowered, trusted leader. And my personal mission is to lead heart-centered uh, communities that bring together women in leadership, enabling you to express yourself freely, feel a sense of belonging, support and encouragement so you can champion high-performing teams and feel more fulfilled as a trusted leader who leads with grace and confidence. So picture yourself feeling completely connected, being able to handle those tough days and also to reach out and have, have those people who are your go-to people as well and to have more focus so you know exactly where to turn your focus on and what to let go as well. So you know what you've got control over and what you haven't got control over as well. Adaptability to change, to change yourself and use different, commun uh, different communication and different leadership styles that are the right strategy in the right time to empower your team leaders to move forward or for you to be able to put forward your ideas within uh, meetings and, in, and, and other opportunities within your organisation as well. But also to be really authentic and to be able to drop down that pretending all the time and speak from the heart and speak with conviction that inspires people into action. And then you can experience the ripple effect. So sleep without, without worry, to connect with your family, to have a sense of purpose and to be relaxed and centered at work, feeling more fulfilled as well. So what do you get with the Lead with Confidence Club? Firstly, you get our community. So our community is priceless. So this is where your go-to people you'll find. This is where we all, as a collective, we all show up, we all speak up, and we all uplift others. You'll get monthly live masterminding sessions, which is led personally by myself. So you will bring your challenges and your wins uh, to the session, and you'll follow your own success path as well, so you know exactly what step to work on next, uh, to help you to keep moving forward as an empowered woman within the office. 
You also um, are, are get invited to our book club, which is our, our, our relaxation, uh, relaxation and fun session where we bring our wine and snacks. Our, our community chooses a book, um, a, to- a book topic per month, and we openly discuss that book topic during the book club. We also we connect with others, and we also usually watch videos around that topic as well to open the room up for discussion around that topic. You also get Q&A recordings. So post your questions in your closed community. At the end of the week, I gather all those questions together and then I do our recordings and the recordings of those questions that have been asked by you as community members, they get posted into your your, your uh, membership site, a separate access uh, portal uh, that you've got login details to access any time at all. You also get little bite-sized 10-minute training videos per month with a small infographic um, uh, a reference card that goes with that as well. And usually the topic that I select is a topic that the group has been talking about the most during the month. So I like to create the topics that are around real-life experiences and, and where, where the community is currently focusing on uh, throughout conversations in the community for that month as well. We also get your private uh, membership portal. You get access to that 24 hours, uh, 24-7. So if you miss a live mastermind group or you miss your live sessions, all the recordings are placed up there. So you can actually um, watch the recording or you may want to review the recording as well at a later time. So normally my private clients who who work with me individually Uh, they pay $12,000 per year to work with me. But I'm not going to charge you that. So the Lead with Confidence Club investment is less than $17 per per week, USD. Less than $17 per per week. And it's a month-by-month membership, so no no locked-in contracts. If you find the membership is not right for you, you just need to reach out to me and then I will cancel your membership, no questions answered, and your payments will stop coming out uh, instantly, automatically. So one more time, what you get um, with the Lead with Confidence Club, you get the monthly mastermind session, you get the monthly uh, book connection session as well. So those two sessions are live and those sessions are always led by me personally. You also get your private support of heart-centered community. You get weekly Q&A recordings and you get the membership site 24-7 portal where you'll log in to your private area. And you also get those small bite-sized training videos per month. So just picture yourself feeling much more connected, feeling yourself more connected at work where you can build those professional relationships, you can show empowerment and also in your personal life as well. Be more connected because you can leave work at work and focus on your your, your wonderful family and friends and to enjoy the lifestyle that you deserve. Uh, You also gain more focus, so so you'll know exactly the challenges you're experiencing. You'll know what to move forward to. And if you want to, we can hold you accountable as you put in place some, um, some things you want to achieve, which stretches you within your current role as well. Also, the adaptability, so you can adapt your communication style and your leadership style to the person who's fully engaged with you or disengaged and also who's competent, who's competent in those tasks as well. And also to be truly authentic so you can stop pretending and speak from your heart. And then one more time, you'll experience a ripple effect. You'll sleep without worry. You'll connect with your family. You'll have a sense of purpose and you'll be more relaxed and centred at work and enjoy going to work as well. The Lead with Confidence Club investment is less than $17 per per week, which is $67 per month. No locked-in contracts. You can cancel at any time, month-by-month membership. So Diane, Diane is a community member, and um, Diane's been with us now for six months in um, in the membership, 
and she just loves being there. It's helped her to transition into a uh, a new career that she absolutely loves. She came from a organisation that was very much bullying, giving her a hard time. She lost her confidence and spiralled down, but through the community support uh, led by myself, she was able to regain her confidence and now she works in her dream job, which is absolutely amazing. Michelle, uh, another member, she just wanted to have, she wanted to come along and just have fun. So she wanted to be able to have a really good, nice community around her that, that gave her that connection as well. You know, be inspired with the conversations that she's a part of and to walk away having fun and feeling connected and a sense of belonging with her. The most important thing for her was having community. So join the Leader of Confidence Club. Click on the link below. Uh, it's there in front of you. Love to have you on board. Love to connect with you. Come along, meet our community and start to empower yourself and lead with confidence so that you become the leader that enjoys enjoys going to work and, and you're able to have those heart-centered conversations and a feel of community connection around you as well. If you've got any questions, reach out to me personally. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you in the group and hopefully you will come along and join our next level, which is Lead with the Confidence Membership Club as well. Take care and talk to you again very soon.